Hello and welcome to this video about uh, the merits or otherwise of various different music media. Uh, so I'm going to start off with vinyl, the LP record and the 45. Um, people can't do away with this format really. Um, it's been around since I suppose the 1950s I think was the first were, were the first uh, actual vinyl records before then they had shellac records um, and a lot of uh, the 50s rock and roll records were actually made um, as shellac 78s um, but yeah um, it's one it as, as I said it just won't go away um, and I think that's probably because it sounds so good um, it's does have its drawbacks. Uh, its main drawback is its physical size, which means that it's limited in the amount of music it can actually carry. Um, and that limitation is about 22 to 25 minutes aside of an LP record playing at 33. Um, but having said that, um, people have always said that the dynamic range of the LP is not as good as CD and so on and so forth um, but somehow or other you can actually get some very uh, well recorded but hot sounding um, uh, music onto vinyl um, if you listen to for example a 12 inch record a 12 inch single you'll find that if you try and make a digital transfer of it you will have to turn the output of your uh, of your record player down or the input gain of your um, uh, computer down because it's just so damn hot. Uh, I put a, 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 a 45 recording of Take a Chance on Me where I hadn't done any adjustment at all um, onto YouTube a few years ago now um, and you can hear it actually um, sort of uh, clipping and what have you because it, the, the the signal was just so hot um, the, th the the problem is actually uh, that bass sound waves actually take up an awful lot of physical space um, and as they do so they drown out treble now there are two things that can actually be done to correct this. The first thing is an equalization curve. Now again, people have criticized vinyl because it needs an equalization curve. It's called the RIAA curve, fact fans. Um, and I'm not really quite sure why, because all music media formats need some sort of technical adjustment before they will play acceptably. Um, digital formats, we'll talk about later, but they have a, a sort of a, a, a filter on there because if you don't filter out um, uh, a, a CD uh, or, uh, or a digital download, um, at the playing stage you'll get an awful high frequency whine. Okay, so um, so yeah, the, the the fact that vinyl has this problem is just it's just par for the course. All right. So the RIA equalization curve means that when a record is mastered, they boost the treble and they um, uh, uh, and they decrease the bass uh, a certain amount. And uh, inside your record player, or amp well, actually your record player's phono stage, actually really uh, in the amplification, uh, it gets um, it, it gets put back to how it actually originally was. Okay, and that is, it, 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 it's just how it happens, okay, it's just to make sure that bass frequencies don't, um, don't sort of overcrowd the treble um, uh, frequencies. Now, um, the thing as well is that you can also use that sort of thing to your advantage if you're um, a little bit clever. Now, um, in vinyl's heyday, the charts were full of albums that uh, were, you know, the, the the typical greatest hits album, you know, the the, the twenty golden great style album, where um, the 
uh, that they would try and sort of crowd on as many hits as they possibly could because uh, the record company had decided that a such and such a group needed to make them some more money. So, you know, let's cash in a bit, folks. And, um, and like trying to crowd 15 or 20 tracks onto an album means that you've got to do some serious sort of compression of the songs before um, b before they will all play acceptably and um, uh, uh, and sort of you know uh, fit as it were okay and uh, as can be sort of gathered the sound will suffer from that all right uh, I have a an epic uh, collection of Abba Greatest Hits Volume 2 where it's just um, it, it, it's dire to be to be honest um, and uh, in order to make Summer Night City sound loud all the songs on side two had their volume reduced <laughs> um, so, so that um, so that this could happen and uh, you, there was also quite a bit of print through on the album as well so it's not one I play very often but having said that um, I've got sort of next to me here this album here, which is more Bob Dylan greatest hits. Okay, now on this album, there are, let's count them, shall we? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21 songs. All right. Um, but what they did was released it as a double album. And because it was released as a double album, you could get sort of four or five songs per side. I think side four's got a couple more on it, but they might they must be short ones. Um, and because of that, um, it's it sounds absolutely beautiful. It's the sound is punchy. The bass is beautiful. It's well controlled, but it's nice and and all there. And it 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 just sounds bloody marvelous to be brutally frank with you um and uh yeah there there are a number of albums such as like uh, um Elton John's Goodbye Yellow Brick Road for example where they did the same thing and and the sound it just beggars belief it, it it's so beautiful a lot of um uh more modern albums uh are being released as double albums just because uh you can get a nice powerful sound if you restrict the amount of musical material per side. All right. Having said that though, um, you know, your average common or garden album with maybe 12 tracks on it or something like that, uh, provided it's been well looked after, uh, they they usually sound absolutely beautiful and, uh, and wonderful and they they make you wonder why on earth things need to be re-released and re-released and remastered and what have you and, and, and what else um i've got uh recently uh from ebay i bought a fairport convention album needs a clean from 1969 and uh the sound is absolutely wonderful. Uh, back in the in the day, in in the seventies, um, they really knew how to record music. And you know, it it there's there, there's an argument here in saying that it's not necessarily the music carrier that is the issue. It's it's who recorded the music and how they recorded it. Um, on uh, I've got uh, Sweet Baby James, another nineteen seventies original. Uh, first pressing of that, and the drums on there just again they beg a belief they they're, they're so beautiful, and when they play loud, they play loud, and when they play quietly, they play quietly, and the loud drums really whack you in the chest um, and and every instrument has space around it nowadays they tend not to do that, even Agnetta's song um, when you really love someone is you know it, it it's just loudness ward and um to again sort of quite high proportions and the the stereo positioning and the and, and the acoustic sort of um, impression that you get from listening to it is just of everything all sort of smudged and, and blurred and sort of wallops together and that doesn't actually make for a good sounding record so so yeah uh, that's really all there is to say about vinyl. If you want to hear 
you know, a, just an, a, a smidgen of how good vinyl can sound. Look at my Rega P5 videos on YouTube, um, of which there are many, and, uh, and, and just hear it for yourselves, okay? Um, so, the thing was that in 1963, uh, Philips, who are a sort of a European, sort of, I think they're Dutch, or well, they're originally a Dutch company, um, decided that they wanted to invent um, a small, portable, easily recordable format for, um, originally it was for dictaphones and secretaries and, you know, who want to, want it to sort of, you know, if you've got the, the, I don't know, the MD of a company wants his secretary to type a letter, he would record onto a small portable format. And there was quite a bit of a format war here as well. Um, at the time, 1963, the thing that people actually recorded onto was tape. Um, and if you wanted to listen to tape, you bought a reel-to-reel -reel, uh, recorder where the tape was on open spools. Look at the Cassette Masters channel if you want to see some examples of that. Um, and Philips wanted to try and make that into a much more portable thing, originally, as I said, for sort of secretarial use. And um, they invented the compact cassette. They were very clever because whereas rival formats uh, were sort of patented, Philips decided to offer open source to anyone provided that they followed the um, the sort of specification right down to the absolute letter so that um, any cassette tape or tape machine was compatible with any other depending on you know which which companies were producing it so that it so that you know one company's things played back on another and um, surprisingly enough it took a little while but it actually sort of caught on um, and before too long, uh, albums were being released on cassette as well as vinyl. Okay, now cassette has its drawbacks. Its major drawback is that as far as tape goes, the wider it is, the better, because then you can fit a lot more signal on. Okay, and the faster it plays, the better as well. Okay, um, and Therefore, when you were had when you had these sort of reel to reel recorders, you you'd need quite large spools of tape to record relatively small amounts of music. Uh, although it would be sort of pretty good quality music, fifteen inches per second was absolutely wonderful. Now with cassettes, because you wanted to make it small, a the size of the cassette dictated the width of the tape that could be inside. Um, and B, um, the, uh, the, the speed at which that ran, so that you couldn't sort of, um, if, if you put too much cassette in, um, or what am I saying, too much tape in on one spool, you know, to make a nice long sounding thing, um, you, would, you wouldn't have room. So um, they actually had to make the tape play a lot slower. OK, and, you know, compared to 15 inches per second, which is like a sort of a, a, a wonder speed for reel to reel tape, um, uh, actual cassette tape played at one and seven eighth of an inch per second, which is very slow. I'm sorry, it's dark. There's a uh, traffic going past and it's obscuring my window. Um, so. It also had to be extremely narrow. And if you wanted to play both sides, um, you could only use half the tape width for one side and half the tape width for another. So it's absolutely minuscule, sort of micro technology before it had even sort of been invented, really. Um, but with things like Dolby noise reduction and with the the quality of the actual cassette uh, of the actual tape um, inside uh, being constantly improved. Um, it managed to sort of uh, be a, an, an acceptable music carrier, okay? Um, the other sort of, I suppose, downside to it was that when pet cassettes started to get extremely popular, um, albums used to be produced extremely quickly 
and um, they were, were produced um, at sort of high speed dubbing things, uh, high speed dubbing levels, which uh, took its toll on the sound quality and because they tended to use very cheap cassette shells uh, to pack the, the, the spools into, um, they tended not to last and so um, whereas nowadays I have got sort of vinyl from the 50s and 60s which uh, still plays very well indeed um, I've got cassettes from the 80s and 90s which play absolutely terribly and which you know you can't really listen to I've got some cassettes it's extremely temperamental really I've got some cassettes that play nicely some um, I'm talking about pre-recorded material here as opposed to blank cassettes um, but yeah, um, so if you're thinking of buying uh, a second-hand cassette machine, uh, just be a wee bit careful, um, check the, the condition of your cassettes, because nowadays, whereas you can still buy brand new vinyl, and a lot of brand new artists are releasing their stuff on vinyl, um, Emily Sande, for instance, her um, uh, her latest album is available on vinyl. It was forty five quid when I looked at it on eBay, but I think it's a double album, as um, as I sort of spoke about earlier. But you cannot buy um, sort of cassette currently, okay? And even blank cassette. I think there are some uh, companies that are still offering blank cassette. TDK, I think, might be, uh, but um, it's. Uh, <coughs> it's sort of, um, you know, a, a lot of the time you're buying old stock. So you have to be a wee bit careful. Um, I still like it. Um, in terms of sound quality, um, it's not as open and punchy and as powerful as vinyl, but all of the sort of analogue nice bits are still present provided as I say you've got a good example of it um, and um, yeah it, it it sounds warm and cuddly and uh, it, it's like putting on a lovely sort of warm glove or a nice old familiar pair of shoes or something like that because it's you know um, it, 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 it's, it's just so nice to listen to okay but as I say it's in you know lesser quantities than uh, of niceness than vinyl um, uh, blank cassettes provided again that you use reputable um, samples from companies like Sony and TDK and BASF uh, who are someone else now? I don't know who they who they are now. I can't remember the name of them, but they 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 they've changed. But provided you, that you use a reputable uh, blank cassette, um, it can often be an awful lot better than um, than a, a cassette album of you know a, a, or a pre-recorded cassette album of the same material. Um, the advantage of tape any tape this is, whether it's reel to reel or cassette, is that yes, there is a threshold at which um, the cassette or, or, the, or the tape will start to distort um, if, you, if, if the music is too loud to go onto it. So you have to sort of adjust your recording levels or adjust your output levels from the actual machine um, accordingly. But if you go over that by uh, you know, e each tape has its sort of different tolerances, but you can go over it by, you, you know, just a, a, a tiny bit um, and, and send the, the meters into the red slightly. And if you do that, um, you will get a nice, punchy, powerful sound, which um, can often sound a lot better. And uh, in um, the early days of um, vinyl and, or, or music sort of, recording they quite often use analog compression to um, make their album sound louder and more punchy and powerful and all analog compression does is basically you you took the master and recorded it back to a tape um, overloading the tape slightly and then mastered from that and uh, you know that that's essentially analog compression it works very well indeed and um, 
it sounds absolutely wonderful and uh, 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 and you know that's because of tapes tolerances really um beg your pardon oh gosh oh someone wants to talk to me do you want me to talk to you or do you want me to talk to them <laughs> so um that is really a, a cassette for you um it's worth experimenting with but just be aware that these days, uh, because it's essentially obsolete, um, it, you might have to sort of, you know, you might have to put up with the fact that some tapes are quite temperamental. Okay. Um, now, the CD. The CD was introduced, or sort of, um, I suppose it was developed during the 1970s. Okay. Um, and, uh, as a digital format, um, they actually managed to evolve it to quite high specifications. Um, with uh, digital encoding, there are two parameters really which need to be taken in, into consideration. Um, the first one is what's called the, the bit rate. And the second one is basically the oversampling speed, okay? As I mentioned earlier, um, if you don't filter out um, a high frequency um, sort of buzzing sound on CD, then um, it becomes... Um, it, 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 it will be intrusive when you play it, okay? And the lower uh, the, um, the the oversampling speed, the more prominent that buzzing noise is and the more filtering it needs in order to um, rid you of the sound, okay? Now, um, uh, C uh, CD specification is essentially 16-bit. That means that the music is being recorded to um, a digit, a binary digit, therefore it's made up of noughts and ones, um, to 16 places, okay? Um, and its um, uh, oversampling speed is 41, sorry, 44.1 thousand times per second i.e. 44.1k okay now that sounds an awful lot but actually it's a very low specification for cd it means that it means that the filters need to be very aggressive it means that um a sound waveform now i'm looking around if i've got a pen and a piece of paper i will show you okay voila a piece of paper, voila, a pen, All right, so I will draw you a sound wave as you hear it, okay, so there's essentially a sound wave, I don't know what that's going to sound like or anything, but, you know, um, here is your volume, or amplitude, okay, uh, I'll put vol there, there's your volume, so however tall it is, is how loud the sound's going to be. And however close these bumps are together, because let's just carry on, okay, if you've got them very close together, then they're, um, they're high frequency sounds. If they're uh, a space quite far apart, then they're low frequency or bass sounds, okay? Um, so that is what's called your frequency. There, I will even write frequency on there for you, okay? So, a 16-bit 44.1 um, sound as represented on CD would probably be more, I don't know if I can do this here, I will try and show you like that for the same thing, okay? Um, 
the more binary digits you use, such as 18 bit or 20 bit or 24 bit, which are common ones, um, the less bumpy this will be, okay, and uh, the higher the the frequency range, such as 96 um, uh, kilohertz or 96,000 times a second, um, as in DVD sound specification, which is 2496, um, the the more natural the sound will be because of the uh, because of the things I've spoken about earlier. Okay, um, as I say, in the 70s, they could actually um, record CD to 18 and, or, or digital music to 18, 18 or 20 bits per second at higher frequency rates, higher. Um, but because, again, it's money, um, the industry was experiencing a slump at the beginning of the 80s. Um, they needed to do something, and uh, there is a, a saying in the, um, uh, in the music industry, and I do apologise to my younger viewers here, uh, it's SOS, i.e. it stands for same old shit, okay? Um, usually used of things like Reader's Digest compilations of, of you know, a thousand and one Elvis Presley hits or something like that. Basically, the more times that they can release something, the um, <laughs> the more money that they can make out of it. And, it, and they, they're they not actually bothered whether or not it's been released time and time and time again or not. And so if they could get people to dump their vinyl collections and replace all their favourite vinyl by CD, um, the better. And they in a hurry to do that and they put uh, pressure on Philips and Sony who were developing the compact disc to um, uh, to quickly come up with a specification and Philips and Sony for some reason or other just plumped for 1644. They could have said you know uh, 2496 or something like that uh, but or perhaps not as high as that but maybe a bit lower but um, they just chose arbitrarily just for the sake of it 1644 okay it was heralded as perfect sound forever the first CD machines although CD was recorded at 1644 it was uh, the first CD machines that came out were 14 bit uh, some were even 12 bit um, so they couldn't decode all the all, all the signals and things and the first CD players sounded absolutely dreadful indeed um, and it took uh, you know, throughout the the, the mid eighties, um, uh, an awful lot of technological advances in actual CD players before CD actually started to sound acceptable. Um, so it had initially the first few years of CD were quite a bumpy ride, but Philips and Sony and the record industry were pushing this perfect sound forever, and it was nothing like. And a lot of vinyl enthusiasts actually kept with their vinyl records. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and yeah, um, nowadays um, it's, it's actually possible for CD players, my uh, Riga Apollo is, 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 is one, for example, that will actually um, sort of try and guess uh, what uh, a 16-bit CD would sound like if it was actually a 24-bit CD. So it basically um, upsamples everything uh, inside. Um, it's not quite as good as, as you know, a, a native 24-bit um, uh, 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 original source would be, but it's, um, it, it, again, it's, it's not too bad. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, it, it can sound pretty stonking. Okay. In terms of vinyl and CD, the same thing uh, being played uh, uh, as a, a, a vinyl, well, yeah, just talking about just basically the same music. If you imagine um, a Costa Coffee frappe glass, okay, like a see-through cup, for example, all right, with the lid on, all right, take the lid off. And that's how um, vinyl sounds. Put the lid on, and that's how, um, and, and that's basically how how CD sounds. Um, it's um, it, it, it's just this 
feeling, I suppose, with the vinyl that the music itself is not being played from two speakers, that it's actually there, it's in your room, it's present as, as, as a real thing in front of you. And CD, although you might not have the, the, the crackles and pops and what have you, it might be slightly more, depending on your equipment, it might be slightly more speed stable, um, but it still sounds like it's inside two speakers. Um, and uh, it, it therefore doesn't have the vibrance and vitality. And I suppose um, uh, the aggressive compression um, that, that they use have been trying to, I suppose, um, overcome that. Um, it, uh, part of it, again, comes back down to, as I was talking about with tape, this sort of naught decibels level where you... Um, you're going to go into distortion if you go above that level. Um, that is absolutely mandatory in CD. You cannot distort CD even by um, an nth of a, 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 of a decibel um, because if you do, the actual music is lost. It's lost. You know, it just it just doesn't work. Oh, and someone wants to talk to me again. Um, so. Um, given the choice and the availability of the music that you want to listen to and all that sort of thing, you know, if you, if you can choose vinyl, then I would say do it. Um, uh, CD doesn't sound bad and the best ones can sound very good indeed, but um, it, it's, no, it's nowhere near as good as vinyl. When we come to um, downloading formats, um, such as your MP3 file and stuff like that, um, in order for uh, a download to work, um, to download quickly enough onto a computer, to not take up too much hard disk space because um, the, uh, the music sales people want you to have thousands and thousands of them. Um, you know, this was the, the original iPod, Steve Jobs coming on stage and saying, look, I've got a thousand songs in my pocket. Um, that was all at very, very low bit rates. Um, and whereas uh, um, you know, a, a, a CD, a track from the CD may take, say, maybe between 30 and 50 or 60 megabytes of space, um, uh, um, the same thing being, being compressed to an iTunes download may only take up three megabytes of space. For example, um, and you know, to, to do that, um, the the compression methods they use again, it's like I don't know. It's like saying, well, look, um, the um, I don't know. We're we're packing up a suitcase to go on an aeroplane, you you know, and it's all got to be hand luggage, and so therefore, you know, to get your best suit in there, who's going to notice the arms and sleeves missing? I know. We'll we'll just chop them off. <laughs> and, and and you know and then say you know I've managed to get my best suit into my in, in, into my suitcase and actually you know it, 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 it's ludicrous really um, the, the the philosophy is that there's so much supposedly in um, a, a CD track that the, that the human ear just doesn't hear therefore if we um, if, if we get rid of that we get rid of all the data that contains that material, then um, we, we've actually got a much smaller file. And I don't see it myself. And certainly, uh, when I first started downloading music, um, the difference between um, the original CDs and the, and, and downloads, because there are, there are yeah, um, I think, uh, one of them that I, I decided was that I, I liked Jamie Cullum, and I got his... Um, uh, Catching Tales album originally on uh, a, a, a download. It was from the the Microsoft Store. Um, can't remember what that's called now. The Windows Media, the one that worked in it was integrated with Windows Media Player, which has now closed down, and you can't play those files anymore. Um, <coughs> wonderful, thank you, Microsoft, for that one. Um, but um, yeah, the the stereo information was just ludicrously lost. On the download compared to the CD, 
the CD is one of my favourite demo things if I'm demoing equipment or something like that because um, uh, it, it contains the track Fascinating Rhythm which is just absolutely wonderful. Jamie Cullum you're sort of running around the piano um, sort of knocking on the wood and um, and plucking the, 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 the strings of the piano and that sort of thing which is so in your face on the CD and such a a, a wonderful thing to behold um, and there was none of that presence on the download and this is what um, people are actually uh, missing now because you know oh you know who cares about the CD anymore the CD is becoming obsolete everybody you know Apple aren't even putting CD drives onto their computers anymore you know that's how untrendy they are but actually you, you know you're actually losing a hell of a lot of, of of sound quality just by you know just accepting the the, the fodder that you're being given um, and the same is true actually of um, uh, of TV programs and films that you download from the iTunes store as well um, if, if, if you look at the the, the, of the sound quality in particular uh, of a DVD and of the of the downloaded film um, being played on the same equipment, you'll hear a huge difference between um, between uh, the download and the DVD. You know, and that's DVD. That's not even Blu-ray that I'm talking about there. So um, you, you know, be cautious of of downloads. Um, I'm being prattling on for 36 minutes now. Um, I'll just say a tiny wee bit about um, uh, just you know, just mention you know a couple of other odd formats that have that have been sort of in in the fray um <laughs> when cd first came out people were you know or the, or the music industry was desperate to end the dominance of the cassette the cassette in the 80s had become extremely popular it was the age of the of, of the cassette walkman and the boom box and um and so they thought, well, look, let's let's have a machine that can play new kind of digital cassettes and still be capable of playing um, analog cassettes as well. All right. And thus was born the DCC format or the digital compact cassette had exactly the same specifications in terms of physical appearance and and sizes as a normal cassette. But it uh, it used uh, digital encoding to record onto uh, to record onto it, it never actually took off. Uh, I think a few pre-recorded albums were released as DCC or digital compact cassette, um, but it, it 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 never really happened. And um, a part of it was this was this scare. People, the, the industry was extremely worried about home taping. You know, people sitting in their bedrooms taping the charts like I did when I was 14. <laughs> and, um, and you know, there were, there were all these like home taping is killing music and stuff like that. And, and they were really worried that if, if people could actually make a, a bit for bit sort of copy of a CD onto a DCC cassette, um, that the industry would lose out a, um, a, a, an awful lot more than it actually did. Um, as it turned out, the music industry is completely s stuffed because of things like YouTube, Spotify, and you know torrenting and that sort of thing. So, like um, pirating is just you know far more prevalent these days um, the, than it ever was. It's it's rather ironic, really. I think they should have given DCC a chance. I'd have liked to have got my hands on a machine and, and, and had a had a wee go with one. Um, Following DCC, um, uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, Sony invented the mini disc format. Uh, mini discs were, uh, uh, they, they resembled, in, in a way, they resembled sort of floppy disks, but they were smaller, made out of plastic. They contained inside them um, a tiny little version of a CD. Um, and again, in order to be able to get an album's worth of material onto one of them, you had to use a compression format. The compression was nowhere near as aggressive as MP3 or AAC or WMA. Um, 
files. Um, it was called ATRAC, A-T-R-A-C. Um, and to be honest, um, the, the, the mini disc player that I've got, which uses ATRAC type R, which was one of the later uh, compression techniques, um, actually sounds very good indeed, and much, much better than uh, a, a, an iTunes download or anything like that. Um, and not as hissy as cassette or as temperamental in um, these days. Although, to be honest, I don't actually use it an awful lot. So, um, because again, it didn't take off as a format. Um, so there you go. There's a look at some common um, music media formats. Um, and really, I suppose, long live vinyl, RIP the cassette, uh, let's hope that CD does not die either um, because uh, in terms of a convenient thing that is the highest music quality that is commonly available, yes you've got umpteen kind of flak download formats with you know uh, really high quality downloads on there but you know you're not going to get your, your next Lady Gaga album on these formats really. Um, it tends to be, you know, very sort of eclectic kind of music styles that, that tend to be on these things. I think Lynn and Name have both got themselves these sort of very high quality download things. They're expensive and, um, and to be honest, they're not entirely readily compatible with your common or garden Mac or PC without, you know, extra software to decode them and all that sort of crap that you have to put up with. Um, and... <clears throat> so, in terms of you know commonly available things, the CD is the thing that most people know about. It's um, you know it, it's it's you know they're, they're to a penny. You know, let's actually keep them, people. Yeah, um, may not be the best in the world, but they're good. Um, let's hope that um, I don't know what I hope for downloads really. I don't I'm, I, I don't know to be honest um, but you know I, I, I just wish really that people realized when they had a good thing in the past and really um, not to um, not to you know just chuck it away really It'd be nice if these things could all exist together and that things weren't pushed out because new things were coming in I suppose that's what I'm saying really okay 42 minutes and 30 something seconds and with that, I am signing off. Goodbye.